Welcome to the second part of my Locklick cutting machine series. My name is Carrie. If you're wondering what a Locklick is, it's a new cutting machine by HTV Rant that is incredibly similar to the Cricut Explore Air 2. If you missed part one, don't worry, you can go back on my last video and check it out. In my last video, I unboxed this Locklick machine and did a detailed side-by-side -side comparison with the Cricut Explore Air 2. I explained what's the difference between a Locklick and a Cricut, and showed how to set up the machine. Today, in part two, we're diving into the software side of things. I'll walk you through how to install the Locklick software called Locklick Idea Studio. Just click the link in my video description to get started. From there, we'll explore how Locklick Idea Studio works, and you'll see how it compares to Cricut Design Space. I'll also teach you how to calibrate a Locklick machine, which is a necessary step before making your first project. Calibrating your machine ensures that you get precise and accurate cuts every time. After the calibration, we're getting hands-on with our first project together. I'll be using the patterned heat transfer vinyl that came with the lock lick, cutting it out, and then heat pressing it onto a pair of shorts. If you decide you want to buy one of these cutting machines, I'll share some promo codes that you'll only find on my channel at the end of this video. Before we start the installation, I'd love it if you liked, subscribed, and commented on this video. Your engagement really helps my small business grow here on YouTube. Help me reach my goal of getting to 50,000 subscribers. We have a lot to cover in this video, so let's get started. Click the link in my video description to bring up the Locklick Idea Studio software download page. Click the button that corresponds with the type of computer you're using. I'm using a Windows, so I click Windows. I got this pop-up warning and clicked Run Anyways. Then Next, Next, Install. This process took a few minutes, but I sped it up for the video. Then click Finish. Nothing automatically popped up, so I went to my Start menu and searched for Lock Lick, and the program came right up. Press the Click to Register button below the Login button. Type in your email address, password, first and last name, then click register. This is what the canvas looks like in the Locklick Idea Studio. If you go up to the help tab, they have some great learning resources. Click help, beginner's guide, and watch the video to familiarize yourself with the different functions. Then click Help, Operations Manual. This brings up a 41-page PDF operation manual full of tons of important information. It's a big file, so it might take a few minutes to load. We already installed and registered, so that gets us through the first 14 pages. Page 15 is where the real important stuff starts. They teach you how to open a new canvas, import designs, and they go over what all the buttons look like and mean. This software has a lot of the things that you typically find in Cricut Design Space. They've got text, offset, alignment options, flip horizontally or vertically to mirror your images. You can arrange layers forwards and backwards. You can change fonts, colors, and size. They have basic shapes like rectangles, circles, lines, stars, triangles, hearts, and more. There's a pen tool where you can draw on the canvas, which is something cool that even Cricut Design Space doesn't have. There's Boolean tools. This seems so helpful. There's tons of screenshots showing you how to do all kinds of things. It seems like they walk you through absolutely everything here. Even Cricut Design Space didn't come with instructions this thorough. I'm not going to go through all of this because that would take forever, but now you know where to find it if you want to learn more about how to use this software. Under the Help tab, you can also check for updates and calibrate your machine. If you click on Library, you'll find all of their pre-uploaded designs. It's basically like Cricut Access, except it's actually free. They don't charge you $10 a month to access their fonts and designs. They have tens of thousands of designs, and you have the option to import your own designs from other sites. I like how if you click on Theme, you can change the canvas between light and dark. Sometimes, when you're working on the computer for a long time, a dark canvas can be easier on the eyes. 
I didn't see a way to change the canvas color, which I wish you could do, but at least being able to make the canvas color dark is helpful if you're working with white designs. I don't see a way to change the canvas from millimeters to inches, and I don't see a curve tool. You can zoom in and out of the canvas in the upper right hand corner. They have an AI graphic assistant beta where you can describe art you want it to make, but it loaded forever and was stuck on generate, so I gave up on that. It doesn't seem like a feature I would use much anyways. Now that I've given you an overview of the software, let's make our first project. So let's just try doing some text. Click text, click on here, and I'm gonna type cricketer. And I wanna change the font. So on the right side, you'll see right here where it says property. If we click that, then we can select the font and change it. So we have lock click fonts or system fonts. System fonts are fonts that you installed from other places like Creative Fabrica or Defont.com. Locklick fonts are fonts that come with the software. I'm going to use one of my system fonts. Let's try Babe. We can use the double arrows in the corner to enlarge it. If we want to change the color, we can click over here and change the color. I don't really know what these end cap or corner buttons mean, so I'll just leave those the same. Right now it's measuring in millimeters. Um, I normally use inches because I'm from America, so I don't know if there's a way to change that. I don't see a way to change it from millimeters to inches, so I guess I'll just go over to Google and convert it real quick. So let's try four inches to millimeters. So I should need 101.6 millimeters. And let's change this to 101 and enter. So that should be about four inches. You should be able to hook this up with either Bluetooth or the cord. I like Bluetooth better, so I'm gonna try that. Just go to your start menu, type in Bluetooth. Try add new device, Bluetooth. I am not seeing any kind of lock click software showing up in my Bluetooth devices, so I guess I'm gonna try and connect it with the cord. All right, I plugged in the machine. Let's see if we can connect this device. Right now it says no device connected. Oh, maybe I had to click here to connect it with Bluetooth. Let's see if I unplug this cord. See if I unplug the cord if it will still stay connected to Bluetooth. So there we go. I guess that's what you have to do if you want to connect it to Bluetooth. You go to connect device and then you click on this Bluetooth. Then you won't need the cord. I'm assuming you have to weld your script fonts together. So I'm going to highlight that and click unite. Because typically on these cutting machines, if you don't, then it makes little slice marks in between each letter. So let's try making it now. So to make it, you go up here to where it says connect device. You wanna click standard cut. Um, if you're doing a print and cut, then you would click here. We're using a 12 by 12 inch mat. We got our text. Here's where we select our material. So we're gonna be using a basic heat transfer vinyl. Actually, this is probably a patterned heat transfer vinyl. And it automatically sets the force, the speed. Whenever you work with a heat transfer vinyl, you need to mirror the image. Down here is where you mirror it. So this is typically the way that you would mirror it. It doesn't show you a preview. It just shows you that the button turns blue. You can either mirror it here or you can do it in here by clicking this button. Then you won't need to mirror it here. And then let's go over and click cut. Before we do our first cut on the machine, we're supposed to calibrate it. So I believe if we go up here to help and click machine calibration, it says print out the machine calibration chart. If you already have one, click next. So I need to print it out. Click print. And then select the printer we want to use and click print. Then we can click next. For 
For some reason, it's not pulling up our machine on the Bluetooth. So I guess I'll plug it back in again. Seems like it's done. Maybe. Next. So on this screen right here, you need to take a look at your calibration sheet that your Lockwick machine just measured and cut on. And you have to try to see where the machine line cuts overlap with the number on the paper. It was super hard for me to see these lines, and I have really good vision. Like, I don't even need to wear glasses. Um, a little tip is to try to look like at the tops of the lines, so like where there's not numbers, look at the other side of that line and you might be able to see a little slice mark. So now I'm going to go into this little machine calibration chart and for A I'm going to make it be 3, B is 1, C is 2, D is Calibrate. So I guess my machine is calibrated now. Now here's the part that I'm worried about. Let's see if this paper comes off of this mat without getting stuck. too much paper residue getting stuck to the mat. It would be a good idea if Lockwick included a light grip mat in with their bundle so that you don't ruin your mat before you even get to use it. Paper really doesn't belong on a standard grip mat. All right, now let's try getting this first project made. So we're gonna stick our pattern heat transfer vinyl in the upper left-hand corner of your strong grip mat. Just line it up in the corner, smooth it down. Now we're going to go into our Lockleg software. Let's go up to Connect Device. We have Standard Cut selected. The machine is selected. We're cutting on a 12 by 12 inch mat. Looks like they do allow you to cut on 12 by 24 inch mats also, so that's cool. Um, we can set our base material over here. I have Pattern Heat Transfer Vinyl selected. You have to make sure you mirror your image. We have to select our project right here and click Cut. Load your mat into the machine by doing one quick push of the double arrow. And then we're going to start it by doing a long push on the start button. One thing that's a little weird is my name Cricketer cut out kind of like in the middle of this mat. It's hard to see, but it's right here. Don't know why it wasn't positioned more up here. One important thing to know is that wherever you place your design on this mat on your canvas is where it's going to cut when you load your mat into your machine. That is different than Cricut Design Space. So before I had my design over here, and then when I cut it out on the mat, it cut the design over here. So it's a good thing I didn't pre-cut my vinyl first, because otherwise it wouldn't have cut right. 
So just make sure when you place it on your mat, you put it on the upper left-hand corner in the canvas and then make it. On to the next step, weeding our design. Let's see how good this project is. I'm just going to cut out my cricketer name. The Locklick didn't come with any kind of weeding tools. I have some for my Cricut, so that's something to make note of. If you haven't purchased one of these machines yet, you will need to get some weeding tools. Weeding is when you remove the excess material around your design until you're left with the design you do want. That is what my weeded heat transfer vinyl looks like. It actually looks kind of cool with the blue and the white. You can't even tell that it said lock lick before. It just looks like a blue and white patterned heat transfer vinyl. The next step is to heat press the design onto the fabric. I'm going to do that using my HTV Ron auto heat press. So to turn it on, you press the power button. And then I'm going to set my temperature to 315 degrees for 15 seconds. And then I'm going to wait for it to get to the right temperature and I'll know it's there when this button turns green and this says 315. This tray slides out and then you can place your material here. Make sure you lay it down nice and flat and then I'm gonna heat press it for about 10 seconds before I put the heat transfer vinyl on just so I can remove any excess moisture that may be trapped in the fabric. The heat transfer vinyl adheres better if you heat press the fabric first. The heat press is ready. It's at 315 degrees for 15 seconds and the light is green. So I'm going to take a piece of Teflon sheet, put it over my material, and just push this in. Push start. Then I'm going to place my design right here, cover it back up with that Teflon sheet, and heat press it again. This is a cold peel type of heat transfer vinyl, so you need to let it cool down for a few minutes before you peel it off. I always leave my machine on until I'm totally done with the project because sometimes after you let this cool and you go to peel it off, it might not stick all the way. So then you're going to have to wait and turn your machine back on and wait for it to get back up to temperature. This will just save you some time if you leave it on until you know that your project is done. This is cooled off now, so I should be able to peel off the cover sheet. And this is not sticking to the fabric at all. So let's try heat pressing it again. This time I'm going to do it without the cover sheet. I've had issues with vinyl not sticking all the way when I use the Teflon sheet. So let's just do it without it. Let's wait a minute and see if that works. Let's give it a try with this instead. Let's see if we have better luck this time. Perfect. Now that our project is done, let's talk about my final thoughts on this machine. I couldn't get my heat transfer vinyl to stick using my auto press from HTV Rock, but that had nothing to do with the lock lick machine. That was an auto press machine issue. 
Honestly, I've had issues with that machine from the day I got it. I've tried to make so many different projects on it, and I can never get my heat transfer vinyl to stick. I've tried making shirts, shorts, ornaments, like nothing sticks, and I don't know why. But once I pulled out my Easy Press Mini, my heat transfer vinyl stuck to the material no problem. It's very similar to the Cricut Explore Air 2. It has storage compartments in all of the same places. It uses the same fine point and deep point blades as the Cricut Explore Air 2. It also uses the same mats and it cuts the same size projects on either a 12 by 12 inch mat or a 12 by 24 inch mat. The LockLick software seems pretty easy to use and they have a lot of similar buttons like in Cricut Design Space. I was surprised to see that they even had an offset button. One feature that was missing was the curve tool. But it seems like they update their software pretty frequently, so I'm sure it will keep getting better as time goes on. The LockLick has its own library full of fonts and designs. If you don't want to use those ones, you can import your own fonts and designs into the software from other places like Creative Fabrica or Defont.com. If you're wondering where to get the best fonts and designs, I would recommend a website called Creative Fabrica. I have a link for a free trial to them down below in my video description. I've only made this one simple project so far, so I'm curious to see how it does with more complex projects and materials. Let me know in the comments what you want me to try making next with the LockLick. The LockLick is normally listed at $199.99, but it's currently on sale for $135.99. On Black Friday, it will be dropping down even further to $129.99. Compare that to the Cricut Explorer 2, which is currently selling for $229.99. From now until November 28th, you can save $15 off the Auto Tumbler Heat Press, the LockLick Cutting Machine, and their machine bundles. Enter code KPBQFV at checkout to save $15. If you spend over $89 on vinyl, you can save an additional $25 off with promo code KRK6FS. If you have any questions or comments, I'd be happy to try and help answer them. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.